know. With us now, we've got the ranking member of the House Select Committee on the Intelligence Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California, whose name is not an anagram of Noah Rothman's. It's not. Noah, well, how would you like to have the first Now uh, that I question? know what Noah. that is, it's kind of cool. Um, so ahead, Facebook, no. we just, we were talking in the last segment, I wasn't here, but I was watching. Yeah. Uh, Facebook has uh, said no more ads from Kremlin-owned outfits, Sputnik, Russia. That occurred as a result of just personal responsibility. This company took it upon themselves to say, we're not going to do that. Does that suggest to you that efforts to regulate the social media environment and the way we regulate cable and, and newspapers and what have you, is that just overkill? Is it unnecessary? I don't think it's unnecessary, and of course those aren't the only two companies. Uh, I think we do want some kind of a uniform standard that requires when you place ads on social media, as when you place them on other media, that they should disclose who's paying the freight. Um, you know, broadcasters may agree to do that, but uh, they may decide, well, they're going to make the ads smaller or make the ads optional. Um, having it uh, a regulatory requirement makes sure that uh, this is not just a choice that can come and go as a platform decides, but rather is something that society says, no, we want that information. So if we have regulation on networks, if we have regulations on cable, news. Uh, why wouldn't we have regulations on outlets where 60 percent of Americans get their news to make sure that uh, it's not misleading, uh, that it, it doesn't incite violence, uh, that it doesn't help the Russian government or other governments improperly influence our elections with false news? I think you're right. Uh, Americans are getting their news in different ways now and there's no reason we should have less transparency uh, simply because a different kind of platform is used. We may have to try to figure out how does that work in a social media environment where you may only have 140 characters mm -hmm. or there are constraints by virtue of how it operates or on Snapchat the content disappears. What does it mean to require disclosure on those kind of platforms? So we'll have to figure out does one size fits all, fit all or do we need to look at each and what is technologically possible, doable and viable. Congressman, yesterday I felt, and many outlets did, some didn't, that there was a huge piece of news vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Russian investigation as far as the head of the analytics of the Trump campaign uh, admittedly reaching out to WikiLeaks uh, as far as the Clinton emails. To me, that seems to really ratchet up significantly a step closer to the president in terms of his knowledge, his involvement, uh, as far as any Russian collusion. What, what's your reaction as far as in terms of your role? My reaction is you have to look at this in, in the whole, and that is if this were an isolated piece of information disconnected from everything else, you might say, okay, maybe that's significant, maybe it isn't. But here you have not only the head of the data analytics arm of the campaign reaching out to someone our CIA director says is basically a foreign intelligence agency affiliated uh, and working with the Russians, but you also have uh, the operative Peter Smith in contact with Flynn apparently and also reaching out to likely Russians on the dark web to look for these emails. You have Russian, the Kremlin essentially through intermediaries reaching out to the campaign and offering dirt on Hillary Clinton. Uh, so you have uh, any number of connections, Roger Stone reaching out to WikiLeaks either directly or indirectly, reaching out to the Russian GRU very directly in the form of Guccifer II. So when you add it all together, there are an extraordinary number of connections between the campaign uh, and those who are stealing the emails, those who are publishing the emails, uh, and a picture begins to emerge. Now, there's still and, a lot of missing pieces. And by, and by the way, I've just got to say, based on my own personal contacts of the Trump campaign during the summer of 2016, anybody in the Trump campaign saying they did not uh, depend on Cambridge uh, to get their data uh, is completely contradicting the very people who are in charge of running the data side of the campaign who told Mika and me that they were relying heavily on Cambridge Analytica to find, to do two things. One, to find uh, key voters, and two, to assure donors we're serious about this. We're not using, you know, we're not depending on the RNC. They had contempt for the RNC. And to now say we were relying on the RNC, they had contempt for the RNC. And basically said the RNC was nothing. They were backwards. And we're having to build this all ourselves. They bragged about it all summer of 2016. They can't now say, oh, we relied on the RNC and didn't really rely on Cambridge. They said just the opposite time and time again to us. Heidi. 
So we are almost now a year out from the election, and we do not have an autopsy, really, even in the vaguest terms of specifically how Russia tried to influence our election through social media. Is that because of the tech companies uh, not stepping up adequately, or is that because also of the partisan direction that some of these investigations on the Hill are going? Well, there's a lot of that autopsy that, you're right, still remains to be done. And just if I can, to Joe's point, uh, this is also a part of a pattern, diminishing the role of Cambridge Analytica. Right. Paul Manafort, when revelations came about him, well, he was only in the campaign a short yeah. time. Couple, couple, yeah. uh, everybody that wasn't family, basically, has been disavowed as having a role in the campaign when it's shown they've been in connection with the Russians in one form or another. But in terms of the, the forensics, we have a lot of work to do, for example, on voting machines, on understanding how they operate, how vulnerable they are. Is They're, that taking place? Is that where, That's what I can't it, it, tell it, if that's actually taking place. It seems it to is, be the most important thing at this time, and it, I don't know if that's taking place. It is not taking place to the extent it should. Now, in that case, I think some of the technology companies are not really willing to share uh, in terms of how their software operates uh, to allow us to do independent investigations, just how secure it is. So we're relying on uh, a lot of sort of white hat hackers to show us that Actually, you can hack these machines. They're not uh, invulnerable. Uh, and I think it's negligent not to have a paper trail for any voting machine these days. Uh, more than that, though, the, the single biggest step that we need to take to protect our election going forward is to develop the bipartisan consensus, and this gets to your latter point, that if a foreign power intervenes next time, we will all reject it, Democrats and Republicans, no matter who it helps or who it hurts. And the single biggest impediment to reaching that consensus is the President of the United States, who will not even acknowledge that this happened. Uh, right. But there, there's no cyber patch to all of this. The biggest defense is a united public, and obviously we have a lot of work to do. So, Congressman, let's talk about uh, the uranium deal that's come up in the news with Russia. Obviously, there were some, some close connections with the Clintons. You had, of course, a Canadian ally really close to Bill Clinton, who had involvement in the deal, gave a couple million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. Bill Clinton got paid $500,000, I think, by a, a Russian interest, maybe a Russian bank that had interest in that deal. Uh, the deal goes through. Um, are you guys going to investigate that? A lot of people are saying that's being swept under the rug. Are, are you all investigating that uranium deal? Well, the uh, House majority has announced they're going to investigate the uranium deal, they're going to investigate uh, the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails. So uh, purportedly, we will. Uh, now the question is, is this being done in good faith? Uh, and it's very hard to reach the conclusion that this is done in good faith. Uh, that we have now suddenly, six or seven years after the fact, decided we've got to do another investigation of Hillary Clinton to try to prove that Hillary Clinton interfered in this decision to grant this uh, uranium shell. Sure, shouldn't that be, uh, and of course if she did, that's something that you would want to know, we would all would want to know. Isn't that something that could be determined fairly quickly by seeing how far up the chain this decision went? I mean, we I read in reports, I don't know if it's the truth or not, but I've read in reports that these sort of deals usually didn't make it to the Secretary of State's level. But shouldn't that be something that we could quickly determine? The answer is yes if you're operating in good faith, but look at Benghazi. We did eight investigations and the goal in the GOP was prove Hillary Clinton intervened with the security in Benghazi and got Americans killed. That was the narrative they wanted to tell and they were determined to spend years and millions of dollars to prove it. Now they never could because it wasn't true. So now we're going to embark on a potentially endless investigation to prove that Hillary Clinton interfered in this CFIUS process, the process of approving or denying a deal, uh, when there's no evidence that she did. And here's the thing that really concerns me, Joe. Um, there are reports within the last 24 hours that the president weighed in with the Justice Department and said, lift the gag or, in other words, let's let this informant speak, let's push this investigation forward. That's the kind of thing you do in a tin pot regime that right. <laughs> is on the road to democracy. You punish the losing political candidate right. by interfering in the justice system. And that looks like what's going on here. That will need to be investigated. Con uh, we, we unfortunately were up against a hard break. Uh, and I also need to look up the meaning of the word CFIUS. It's a good word. <laughs> I want to use it in the future to impress all of my friends at the next dinner party. Alex, uh, does Jack know what the word CFIUS means? 
I'm sure he does. I'm sure he has eight anagrams for it. So <laughs> 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 it's it's with an atom shift. Thank you God. very no, much. No, no. Oh, that's no. syphilis. I'm sorry. Still a, <laughs> oh, God. Still a I head. get confused. No, I, yeah, I could see how you would. We'll dig into the newly released stiff. <laughs> we'll be right files. back. Hanging curveball. The president we'll be right tweeted back. moments ago. We'll talk about it. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.